Welcome friends. It is really good to be back with you again on a Friday morning. I love this. I thought that I would get tired of this after some months and months and months, but now that we're going on two years, I, I love it and I look forward to it every Friday. And I'm so happy to see so many of you here. It's just really good to connect again. Um, so we I don't know what it is we're going to talk about this morning. Last week, our discussion went several different places. And I don't know that if some of you know this, but after the discussion last week, some of you stayed on camera and we actually had another really lovely and meaningful discussion, which I will post today on um, on YouTube. So those of you who missed it can share It was a really sweet um, really sweet connection with um, Sarah, one of our moms of young ones, talking about how to make time to connect with um, with the Savior and, you know, with heaven to make that time for prayer and personal connection when you have a busy, busy life with little ones. So it was a really sweet conversation. This week, we've got all kinds of things open for us this week. I mean, this month in Mother's University, the topic is history. So there are lots of things there that we can go to. There are lots of things just about mothers of influence in general, how that's working for you, what that's like, what your connections have been with other women lately, and then making those connections here, having an opportunity to share what you're learning here with your friends. So I love that about this group. I love that we can share and talk about the things that are warming, warming and nurturing our hearts as we move forward in this journey. So there's all kinds of things open for discussion today. <clears throat> so if there's anybody that wanted to tag on to last week's conversations, any parts of that, if you wanted to add something or to any other um, recordings that you've watched, feel free to do that as well. <clears throat> So anybody have anything to start that you just feel is right there forefront that you want to bring up before we dive in? You know, I give you a little bit of time. It always takes, we say, right, it takes 30 seconds to process the question then a little bit of time to figure out if there's something we want to say. I also really like to intentionally have silence on here so that we all learn to be comfortable with that. That's okay. It gives us some time to think a little bit and just be aware of where we are. Okay, I'm going to share that I listened again this morning to the five things. How many of you are familiar with the take five um, that's on the well-educated heart? So if you go to the app, or you're online and you look on the screen, there's one of those line numbers that says take five. And I cannot see backwards to be able to point to it to you, but trust me, it's there. So you find the, oh, it's a little, it's the, the clock right there. So you click on the take five and it takes you to these little five minute or less little mini lessons about different aspects of um, nurturing your heart. And if you go to the very end of those, week 20, um, the very number one thing on week 20 is take those, is the five things. So you go into that week and then you can play any of those recordings from that week. I highly recommend that. I would love it if the moms here would be willing to listen to that this week in preparation for next week's meeting. And we can talk a little bit about that. So again, in the take five, in that take five section, the very last week, week 20, open up that week and choose the very first thing called the five things. And listen to that. Just take a few minutes. How long is it? Oh, it is. Hold on. Let's start it here. Six minutes and 21 seconds. So a little bit longer than five minutes. Take a listen and then just come next week and we can discuss that a bit. I think that is one of the best introductions to uh, what we're trying to do as we are looking to find joy in our lives. And there's just so many resources out there to do that. But I think a lot of times it's really important to first talk about the why. Why are we doing this? Why is it important to make time 
to do this, to find joy, to cultivate that in our lives, to nurture our hearts. And we've had a lot of discussions lately, but I'd really like to review with you what you feel like has happened to you as a result of having mothers of influence, this opportunity to gather with other women to share the things that you're learning through the well-educated heart. So some of it will be review. Some of it has been shared before, but I really want you to share how you feel like it's made a difference. I know a few weeks ago, as Linnell was doing the wrap up, um, she talked about how this change of heart has affected so many areas of her life in the way that she receives things, the way that she sees the things around her and receives things. So, so can we talk about that? What have you noticed? What changes have you felt in your life that you are seeing in how you respond to the world around you, how you receive things because of this nurturing of heart that you've done? I'll go. Um, I think once you find a community of people or women like we we are here who are just striving to do the same thing and we're all going to do it in our own way but I have found the more that I build a community around what, what, what I'm doing it kind of takes that comparison away I'm not comparing my story to someone else's because that's what a lot of social media does because you're only seeing the highlights yeah but you don't know what they're really working on you just see they're little snapshots, but once you build your community and you have the discussions, that comparison, you know, trap that we all fall into, I feel like it has like dissolved in a lot of ways. And it's dissolved me comparing myself to a lot of those highlight reels on social media. Cause I'm like, well, I actually don't know what their story is. I don't know what they're working on. They thought this post was important to them, but it doesn't need, mean it needs to be my story. And so that's, to me, that's what this has done is it really has just opened me up to wondering what their story is and what are they working on? Well, I really like that. I really like that. That's really interesting, Lindsay. Thanks for sharing that. That's a good perspective. Anybody else? Emily, you look like you were going to share. Yeah, um, I, I was just going to say that this working on my own heart and doing the catch the vision and everything um has softened my heart i am nearing 50 and i've had some life experiences that have made me very um not as tender and soft uh -huh. and so going through this process has like softened me and made me more caring and loving and more childlike like the scriptures say you know to be like a child, humble, meek, submissive. And it's helped me get there. Um, for years I've tried, and this has just kind of helps. I don't know if it sped the process or what. And then like Lindsay said, coming here and, and seeing other women doing the same thing has helped as I express my feelings, which I'm not doing really great right now, but as I express what I'm experiencing and it helps me have a community and when I share the things that I'm seeing, like I've shared on our Marco Polo group, different things, nests I've found or the elk or, you know, whatever it is. And as, as you ladies have shared what you've seen and what you're experiencing, it adds to what it adds to my life. And it helps that process of having a softer heart. I love that. And I see that, you know, I'm going to turn 58 in June. And I noticed that over time, life just dealing with everyday stuff can can put a little bit of a shell around you, you know, because you've had these hard life experiences, you've had trials and difficulties and um, had to take care of a lot of things, managing your family and protecting people. And it's interesting to find a way to find this wonderful thing that that brings that softness back and opens your heart back up to being sensitive to those things. I love that take, Emily. I agree 100%. Okay, who else? 
I'll share. Great. Thanks, Amy. So, um, I agree 100% with the softening of the heart. That's something that I have found the past couple months with doing the, I'm working on the catch the vision right now. And I kind of, I already told Lori this, like I never felt that I was hard hearted per se, but you never know how much more softening you can bring into your life until you actually do it. And so that has brought many miracles and wonderful things into my life. But for mothers of influence, that was, I started that just to hold myself accountable. Like my life was so busy and I wasn't making the time with my kids to, to -hmm. actually sit down and start the catch the vision. I was like, I need to do something to like, kind of force myself to do it. And so inviting those women into my home and having a set time and day every month to just get it done was super helpful for me. And then all of those blessings were able to flow to me because I took the time to do it. So it really did help for you to have an in-person Mothers of Influence group. I like that part that to help you be more accountable to actually doing the studying. Yes, a hundred percent. Because like I said, I just, I, it, time would fly by. And before I realized that it had been a month and like, oh, I was going to start this and it never happened. But when I, when I had people coming into my own home and I had to prepare for them and get the house clean and I had to prepare a lesson to talk about, or just like a discussion, I had to be prepared. And so that really was the push that I needed to, to get it started into my life. Nice. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay. Who else? How has this changed? How has your heart been softening? How has that helped you, Michelle? Yes. Okay, so it's hard for me to to talk, to get on here because I'm a little um, insecure, but I'm learning to get over that. Good. Um, Good. Because sometimes I feel like when I speak, I'm not very eloquent. So anyway. (laughs) That's me. That's me all the way. So you guys have the the best example of do it anyway. (laughs) So, um... I've only been doing this since November and it has changed my life dramatically um, in a way that, so, so quick recap for me growing up, I, I struggled. I had learning disabilities, which I didn't really know until, until I was an adult, but just the way school was. um, And I didn't grow up in a family that really appreciated literature or poetry And so I never had a love of those things. Um, And so it wasn't really until I started diving into this and listening to all of the, um, all the talks and all of the different, um, you know, just everything. Mm -hmm. I have really gained an appreciation and a love for poetry now, for uh, classic literature, all those things that were never, I never really um, thought were very important. I, it's changed my perspective on them. Whereas, you know, in school, it was always like, well, what is this author thinking? And why do you think they wrote this? Or what was this artist thinking? And you have to dissect it instead of just, it's just beautiful. I just like it because it's beautiful and it's just that simple. So it's, it's changed my life dramatically. So. Thank you, Michelle, so much for being brave and sharing. And it's incredible how it does change that. You see everything around you in a different way. You see the beauty, you see, you experience the wonder. It's that like like um lindsay was talking about becoming a child becoming like a child it it affects you in these ways that you never ever imagined it would and it's such a beautiful and a tender thing i love it anybody else i know there are more thoughts out there and you're being brave and i appreciate it i met last night For the second time, we had our Zoom meeting with the young girls. So I have a group of young girls between like 14 and and 20, and we're trying to grow that group and helping them learn these principles early so that they have them already in their lives so that their hearts are already ready to receive these things. And it's just so hard for them to start talking. And I told them, it's the same way. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever, what age you are, it's just difficult. You worry about what you're gonna say and how it's gonna be received. And if you can get your thoughts together. So 
we understand that everybody understands that but we'd love to hear from you whoever kind of has some thoughts and wants to share and if you're struggling with it if you're trying to figure out where do i start what do i do where do i spend time how do i experience this kind of softening we can talk about that too go ahead lindsay oh jen can go <laughs> are you gonna share jen i can go okay so for are we good okay for me um i think um, Marlene introduced me to this concept of like making friends with people we can't know in person. Um, and I think about that all the time as I learn about new people and it makes me really like, like we've been talking about, like become like a little child and I want to know these people and um, I like look up to them. And as we came back to Abraham Lincoln this month, um, I study him every year and yet I learn more and more and like I grow closer to him every year. And this year, I like almost feel like he's like my grandpa. And I know it sounds so silly, but I like have this tender place in my heart for Abraham Lincoln right now. And just this curiosity about people and what their lives were like and um, what they can teach me and what it would be like to know them in person. I just, I love that Well-Educated Heart has opened up this whole, like not just you ladies in person, but that I can have these friends and these mentors in my life that I don't, know in real life um i know like the eternal perspective is that i will know them someday um and that'll be exciting but i don't know i just love this idea of meeting people and getting to know all these wonderful people from history i love that perspective because that's a thing that i is one of my favorite things too is all of the friends that i have made in books and people that i am so excited to meet you know, and you all know Opal Whiteley is my like top one, right? I that's one of the first people that I'm going to hunt down and find because this book has just won my heart and I love her. I've been sharing her with the young girls and they love it. They love learning about her. They love hearing from her. So, yeah, you can connect on uh, in a way that you never thought you could with these people as they share their lives and their experiences with you through the pages of a book. I love that. Thanks, Lindsay. And Jen, you were going to share too. Just reading, uh, just reading some verses yeah. to my kids this morning yeah. from yeah. scriptures yeah. and just read, uh, read about not hardening your heart and just remembered several other verses that say that. And it really like, it says it as a key to like, everything it's kind of a key like as long as you don't harden your heart yeah the lord is going to bless you and help you progress you yeah know? it's hardening our hearts that will stop us from that progression so i'm really glad i was just thinking i'm really glad to have tools and telling my kids i'm glad to know that the arts are a way that we know we can keep our heart open and these little stories we're reading they warm our heart just a little bit each time you know and they help keep it open and Hi, hi, sure hi, 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 hi. I love it. I love it. I love the background. <laughs> that's so great. But yes, yes, that's a counsel we've been given, a warning to be careful that we don't harden our hearts so that we are able to receive these messages. I love that. And I love what Lindsay shared over in the chat. I'll read that. She said her kids watch a show on PBS and they meet people in history to help them solve a problem. After each show, my kids say, that's another person we're going to get to meet in heaven. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Okay, other thoughts? How has this warming your heart helped you to exper better experience the world around you? How are you seeing that? I mean, you can go all directions with that question, right? You know I do, so it's very open. Oh great, he's running away with the mouse. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. I 
other comments. I'm going to ask Cadence to share. I know you just popped in here and I know you didn't, you weren't here for other parts of the discussion, but that's all right. We're just talking about the blessings of this well-educated heart, mothers of influence, this opportunity to share and connect and the warming of your own heart. How do you see that changing your life and affecting how you interact with whatever, fill in the blank? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that I don't feel alone and stuck in my problems, um, especially being able to meet with this group in particular has been a huge blessing because maybe for most of us, we don't find this type of group where we are. And so just having it virtually is just been so awesome for me. Um, and then just talking about learning and through these books and stories, it has just reminded me so much of my childhood of that excitement about learning things. And that has come back into my life and made my life, I don't know, I just feel like as a child, I had, I had this rich life and so excitement about life and things were new. And it's like, that's happened to me again. Um, I'm not sure what else to, to say, except for that it, it's been wonderful. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I feel that, I feel like that idea of wonder, you know, you get to have that back in your life again. And um, you can walk outside or open a book or listen to music or see a piece of art or something and feel those feelings again. And as an adult, sometimes you just, you kind of start getting bogged down with life and stuff and problems and things. And you just, you feel the weight. And I think, wait, 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 we're supposed to, you know, men are that they might have weight, <laughs> you know, no, um, joy, right? So how do we do that? Oh, this is how we do that. We warm and nurture our hearts. We connect with other women. And voila, yeah, I don't, I just, I don't, I can't explain it. It's so incredibly beautiful to me what has happened here and what can happen in person if you can, you know, gather those people, right? But I love that in the absence of those people or while you're trying to gather your people, you can come here, you know, or in between gathering, you can come here and you know be fed and nurtured and then ready to get out there again and meet with your you know your in-person group but i i just could you ever have believed that it would happen virtually i still i know i say that over and over again but i can't get over the fact that you can develop best friends virtually you can make these connections and you feel the connections so i love it okay who else Who's next? I think Lindsay, I feel like you have a lot to share today. So I'm going to go back to you, Lindsay Bunting. Sorry. I remember you were talking about Lindsay that Watkins. Like oh, I know. She um, always does too. I know they do look like cross um, I don't know. I feel like Well Educated Heart and um, being here has, I don't know. I feel like lately what I've been thinking about is just being present. I know that sounds so cliche and I know, like everyone's talking about being present, but um, I think when we notice these things, um, we talk about noticing things in nature and we talk about, I don't know, there's so much of it that helps me to be more present and just to like see these things and then to make those connections with the people around me, which are my children. And um, it just creates these like, these little bonds like I was driving with my son the other day and we just kept noticing things like oh look at that tree it looks different than it did the other day it's got you know it's blooming with something and no. look at the look at the clouds and um all of these yeah. things we were in the moment and making these connections and it just goes so much deeper than just seeing Mom. the things in nature it's Mom. like these it's building this relationship <laughs> I love that. Be careful. It's so I have true. one using centrifugal force trying to not get the milk to spill out of the jug right now. Oh, there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Putting our trust um, in laws bye. and crap. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been reading that book Marlene recommended. I think that's where all this being present is coming from too. But um, I think it's called How How to Write. Oh yeah. I always say the name of the book them but 
there's so many good principles in there on being present and um, just being in the moment, even if it, there's nothing happening right then. I feel like a lot of times as moms, we get stuck in the future. Like, okay, what am I going to do later? What am I going to do tomorrow? Well, I've got to get this stuff done. And we can't ever really be present. But as we practice that and just notice the things going on around us, I've noticed a huge difference. In my I life. love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. And I, I, I know what you mean, you know, that cliche of being present, but it is really true. And it's a really good thing. Okay, other moms, other comments, stories, sharing? If it's all right, I would love to invite um, our new Amy, Amy Clark, to share a little bit more. If, you, if your background is okay and you're okay, I'd love to, for you to share a little bit more, um, kind of what you shared with me, more about your experiences, the things that you're noticing in your life. I'm not looking for a thing in specific, you know, but, but just kind of what you're feeling, what's on your heart. I'd love that if you wouldn't mind sharing. Yeah, of course. So I've been trying to share more, which is not easy for me. I don't think it's easy for anybody, but just stepping out of that comfort zone, I feel like it's a calling for me to just mm -hmm. to share more and share what's on my heart. And that's something I've always struggled with, even like to my husband, like somebody that I should be sharing everything and anything with, but there's always that fear of like, oh, what what are they going to think? Or how are they, like you said, how are they going to take it? And so I typically just stay silent, especially on things like social media. But I, when I got that impression to share more, I was like, why am I not even sharing like with the people I love, like closest to me? Why don't I just like stop and say, oh, honey, like, look at this that I'm learning, or I just have this connection. Like, why don't I do that? And so I have been trying to step out of my shell more and just See what's on my mind and on my heart. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. <laughs> um, so I have been doing the Catch the Vision course. And I, even before starting the Well-Educated Heart, I always knew that these things were important. I knew that storytelling was important. I knew that poetry and art and like nature, like I knew they were important and I wanted them in my life, but I never really took that the actions to do it, to like really bring them fully into my life. And then I did section three and it was like, so you know how in section three, she talks about each of the different subjects and she tells you why they're so important. And I feel like after each subject, I was like, yes, oh my gosh, that's so true. This is the answer that I've been looking for. That's like, I needed that why. I needed the why and, and it just all made all these connections. And like, I would, um, read the one about art and I would get this immense like passion like oh my goodness yes I'm gonna do this and I went out and I bought art for my walls and then the next week I was studying nature and it was the same thing like after each subject was like oh yes and I just have this surge of like I don't know how to describe it just this like this motivation I guess to like start bringing it into my life so after each learning about the whys of each different subject I was bringing poetry into my life and I was going on those nature walks more like taking the the time to do it and be present in it instead of just going on a walk you know like being present on the walk or anyway yeah. so and during all of that so before all this is when I got the um the prompting to start sharing more so going through each of these different subjects and after each subject sharing I it just helped me grow even more mm -hmm. so it was that passion and that motivation and then the sharing of it bringing out even more for each subject and it's just been like this crazy wonderful whirlwind of opening my eyes to new things like things that I knew were all that that were always there but seeing them in a different light and it's been wonderful and beautiful and I just want everybody to know about it because like how different could everyone's lives be and their homes be and their relationships be if everybody could just be open to this new way of seeing and feeling things. 
I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Exactly. Go. You're going to say something else. Go. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I'm happy to. And I'm so thankful that we got to connect. And thank you for inviting me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm just so happy that you came and it just felt like, oh, yes, we've got to make this connection with Amy. So it's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, Lindsay. Bunting, were you going to say something? You started to, yeah. I was just typing to Amy that she's just really inspiring me because I always feel like I need to be sharing and I struggle so much with it. I just want to stay silent and just keep it all to myself. I want people to know about it, but I don't know how to explain it. I'm like Michelle. I just feel like I can't, I can't put it into words. Um, so she's definitely inspiring me to try to figure that out and just start somewhere. Thank you. That's sweet. I want to add on to that because I do know what it is hard, but I have noticed like taking the small steps and sharing with like my mom or with my husband or with like-minded people, I found that it's actually easier than I thought it would be. <laughs> and then I don't know exactly where I'm going with this, but just stepping out of my shell has been easier than I thought it would be when I'm sharing with people close to me. Like I'm not entirely ready to go out on social media and shout it from the rooftops. I mean, I hope to get there someday, mm -hmm. but just starting small and building big has been the key for me. I love that. I love that it was easier than you thought too. I like that too. And I'm going to the comments to see what we have over here. Hold on. Um, okay, so Jen said, I think it really helps to have a mentor to emphasize truths and help us really apply and act on them. I agree. I agree 100%. And I know uh, Tracy had to go and I'm, I'm sad that she's not still here. Marley's here. I'm not sure exactly she's been, um, I think she has a co-op on Fridays, but there are eight grandmas, you know, that's what we call ourselves, but eight grandmas. And we are available to help people. There we go. There's Marley to help those who are just getting their feet on the ground and be having somebody. It doesn't even have to be somebody that it like knows well educated heart better or something, but just another person to be talking with and bouncing these things off of is so incredibly helpful. It does help a lot to have that be somebody who is connected with with God, you know, it has a sensitivity to to beauty and those things. I mean, obviously, that's going to give you a richer and an easier road. But um, but I just I love that idea, having a mentor to emphasize truths and help us to apply those. And I, I'm just going to read the comments and then I'm going to see if Marley, I'd love to have Marley share a little um, or a lot. Um, Lindsay said, I struggle so much with sharing and you are inspiring me, Amy and Cadence. I agree. I agree, Jen. Marlene and Lori, oh, you're so sorry, have been those mentors for me. Marlene's materials and Lori's personal connection in this group. Thank you. You're very sweet. Um, go small and show up. I love that. I love that. I shared that, you know, when I found that that post and then shared it in our little group on Facebook. I love that. You don't have to do the big stuff. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. You just do the little small thing. You show up make that connection. And then seven, I'm kind of the opposite. I find it easier to share with those that I, that I'm not as close to. No, but that can happen too. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to let Marley share with us a bit about this whole, you know, section of that, those kinds of connections and things like that. So Marley, I'm turning it out over to you. I'm afraid that you're really excited to have me say something because I kind of, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I have been um, so inspired by this group, though, just just the way you can share with each other and 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 articulate, even though we never feel like we're articulating very well, you you are, you know, that relationship is here and that ability to just feel what what you're trying to say about how this has has worked in your life and and somebody who hasn't quite felt it yet can't know and so they need us to be able to try to articulate what it feels like and I just feel like there aren't words to do that the right way but but the more times people can kind of add a little piece here a little piece there I think it really helps us 
begin to see when we are feeling it, when we are um, awakening. I, in my own experience, it just felt like a, an awakening and, and fast and sudden and, and kind of um, um, hallelujah-ish, you know, it was just like, oh, this was the thing that I, I was looking for that I didn't know. And, and I think that's, that's what lives inside of us that we want to share with people. We just know there's this thing. <laughs> and even if we can just call it a thing. Yeah. Um, but, but I really appreciate Amy followed up her own question. Like, like I was dying to know, well, how did you start doing that? And then Amy, you were able to just articulate how, how did you begin to do that? And it, it's just pushing out of your comfort zone a little bit. I just, I just learned from, from each of you here has taught me something new and important and articulated and layered in a new piece of, of what we're trying to do, here, which is really important. I Thanks. love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Marley. Oh, I love this group. I love that we can talk, um, that we can make those connections. And I love this, the, what you said about the alleluia thing, you know, because, and I saw Amy nodding her head because as she was sharing with us, you felt that, you know, she was expressing that that's how she felt as she, you know, gone on this journey. So anyway, it's really, really interesting. Um, seven says, I think when we are being genuine and authentic, how capable we are in articulating is not as important. I agree. And I think it's important for us to, to know that and do that over and over again. Um, tell ourselves that it doesn't really matter. You just need to share. And if you're sharing, <laughs> I'm, uh, we're, we're having a game back and forth, muting and unmuting. <laughs> um, but anyway, being able to be genuine is the key. It's just so, so important. So little Turner, it's nice to see you. I'm glad you could join us in our discussion today, buddy. <laughs> Sometimes just pointing it out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, Lori, yeah. Lori, yes, yes, please. Sometimes as, as the grand was, we've talked a lot about how relationships are, are everything that, that you can try to build a MOA group, or you can try to start, you know, at the mother's university or, or even at catch the vision, but without relationship, it, it, it won't grow to be what it becomes and some groups are able to successfully capture that and others it's it's harder but but you've got to just keep going back to those relationships so as as you're going out into your community and into those real life kinds of connections relationships are everything find a way to be loving to connect to care and lay that foundation before you even try to yeah to throw in all the other stuff everybody starts at all the other stuff and it really starts with with relationship and and that's also why we say small and simple it's easier to build that with two mm -hmm. or three people than it is with 20. Mm -hmm. i agree and ladies it is really it, it's not a super easy thing to start a group um if you're worried about uh making it be so perfect it just that's not a concern that's not something you need to worry about it is that relationship those connections so if you invest if you're having a hard time and you're trying to create a group in your area that's right there in person close to you like with what like marley said you know the real focus should be in nurturing the, a relationship with another with another friend you know make that thing the most important um next step and nurture that relationship first and then work on getting a group together once you've got that relationship it makes it it makes it so much easier and i really do feel like marley and i were just talking about this last night having a buddy having another person that is your person 
as you establish a group is so incredibly helpful. And I have, um, she's right there on my screen, but I have Lindsay Bunting and she's been my, she's been my girl. She's been my partner. She's been, you know, just the face I see on the screen that keeps me grounded and makes me know that, you know, we're doing this together. And I have appreciated that so much. It's made all the difference. So consider that too, as you're reaching out, branching out, trying to figure out how do I start a group where I am? develop that relationship first with a friend nurture that have these beautiful discussions it's just you don't need to know oh i know i was going to bring this up you don't need to know how to define the well-educated heart you, you it would be funny probably if you all knew how many times the grandmas have talked about what is the definition how do we explain this how do we describe this to somebody else and as we've talked and if we've learned it's more about the feeling it's the feeling of moi the feeling of mothers of influence that you want to share that you want others to feel and and then it goes from there you want them to feel what mothers of influence feels like feel what it feels like to make that connection genuine connections with other women in a world where social media is the is the you know ruling force or factor or whatever but that's how people connect nobody's connecting on social media those aren't connections that's not real that's not genuine it's fun it's entertaining it's moving it's educational it's whatever it's a lot of those adjectives but genuine real I don't think so. This is connection. And so we get this false idea of connection and, and also think that it can be done really quickly. And it, it takes some time. It takes some investment, you know, of uh, some vulnerability, but some genuine connection. Anyway, sorry, that's my rambling. I'm going to read Emily's. Um, I'm going to read. Hold on. I've got my my camera's in the way. So seven said, um, I think when we're being, oh, that's, I already read that one. Very true. Nourishing relationships is one of the most key parts in well-educated heart in warming the hearts. It's true. So true. So important. I, and then Emily, I've been able to go to, to a couple in-person MWA meetings. It feels like the old fashioned made, uh, made new sewing circle with a topic to discuss and study. There is so much support friendship and love. I love that. And, and that is, that is so much the feeling, isn't it? And so much what I get from Marley as she shares with me about the different mothers of influence groups that in, including hers that she goes to, um, and, and has those experiences. I love that. I love I think, relationships. Lori, it's fair to say it isn't always it isn't always that beautiful that there are times when people have gone to a mall group and gone, that, that wasn't what I thought it would be. And, and, and so it's, it's fair to say, here's the ideal, here's where we're aiming, but, but just like everything else in our life, sometimes we miss that mark, but that doesn't mean don't keep trying. And, and I think it means back up and figure out what can I contribute, whether you're the leader, whether you're a participant, what are you, but it takes time to figure out how to be warm and loving and, and cultivate that. Um, and it takes forgiveness and it takes, you know, a resiliency because, because culturally women have kind of pulled apart and now we're against each other a little bit. Right. And, and, Part of the grand purpose of moi is to knit our hearts together, to heal that, that mother heart so that we can then um, lift and nurture in that community. So, so if you go somewhere and it's not right, gosh, that's what a grandma is for. Let us help talk through it. That's what you are here for, you know, as you're sharing your experience with other people. I love my that. kids make fun of me because I use my hands so much. I'm really sorry. That's a weird oh, problem. I that's okay. <laughs> You're knitting. You were knitting your hearts together, and I'm over here knitting. You know, I'm doing this. I'm like, I can't keep my hands still. But yes, yes, that's so beautiful. And I do. If you go to a Mothers of Influence group, or you start one, and you don't have that warm, wonderful experience, you know, right off. Like Marley said, that's okay. You just take a step back and kind of, you know, assess. If you're a visitor, find out how you could help bring it 
two more of that warm and wonderful, you know, feeling and connection. A lot of times it's just uh, jumping in and um, not understanding that those relationships, that connection is, is really, is that first step. So um, anyway, I love that. That's good. That's really good to remember that. But I love that it's about connection. I love that it's about um, feeling, being in a place, feeling that you're safe. You can share with these people. And and I again, just this group has been so good about that. I love that. Um, other thoughts, other thoughts about this sharing. Yeah, Amy. So it this whole conversation has reminded me of a story and I don't have the best memory so I can't remember where I heard it it very well it's probably on the well-educated heart somewhere but a village of women who would get together and wash their clothes yeah so it was on the well-educated heart um anyway so they would wash their clothes together and then one by one each of the mothers the women got a washing machine and soon no one was meeting at the river to wash their clothes and throughout the village, depression and anxiety started to break out. And the realization was that because they weren't meeting together, something as simple as doing laundry together, but it's that time to connect, like we were talking about and have those heart to heart conversations and be part of something together was so powerful that something like a washing machine can take it away if we're not careful. Yes, that is one of my favorite stories. I'm so glad you brought that up, Amy. Really glad. I love that idea. And I think too, that our fences, have you noticed you go to newer neighborhoods and all of the fences are, you know, they're privacy fences, right? And back in the older neighborhoods, how high are the fences? if they have their, you know, the, the original fences, there are these low fences where you could go and be talking with your neighbor over the fence, you know, waving, smiling, seeing what their kids are doing or whatever. I'm not saying I want that necessarily because I sort of like my privacy fence, but I love that idea, that feeling of that kind of a connection. What do you think about that? How can you make that? How could we help foster? Okay, we feel it here, right? We've talked about how wonderful this is, what we're getting here and those connections and how that has, we have blossomed because of these connections together and the work we're doing on our own hearts. So how could we help to foster this kind of feeling at home? Either if you have young children and all your energy is here and you just don't, there's nothing left to go out the door, right? How do you foster it here? Or if you have a little bit of leftover, you're in a little bit of a different season. How do you foster that next door across the street? You know, how do you do that? What are some ways we could do that? Have you thought about that? Have you had some experiences? Linnell, you know, I'm going to go to you because um, I love your experience with your neighbor. Um, the across the street neighbor, <laughs> but there are ways that we can feel prompted, encouraged to make those connections outside of our circle. We can bring others into this warm and welcome um, circle and feeling. I have something. Great. Hi, Sherry. I'm so glad you made it. And do you, is it, do you pronounce it Sherry? It's Shari. Shari. Sorry. Okay. Shari. So if you forget, just say sorry, Shari. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's helpful. Well, um, mine is not something I've done yet, but it's something my girls and I are working on. We are taking the science units from Good and the Beautiful, and the girls are um, planning a kind of class for other kids. We're going to invite some kids in our ward and also some kids in the community around certain age groups and my girls will run the lessons and have a little craft and have a game around you know the unit and that was kind of a really cool inspiration for me because I thought you know they're getting tired of me standing up here saying la 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 you know <laughs> so they're excited about it and I feel like we can um, warm hearts that way and get other kids in the community excited about the that learning is so fun and so heartwarming and enjoyable sorry about the kid noise anyway and it's not just send them off to public school where they're under fluorescent lights all day 
in a closed room all day, no fresh air and, uh, you know. Yeah. Well, what a wonderful way to open up what you're experiencing and what your children are experiencing with other families. I love that. That's a great idea. Lindsay. I'm going to share an experience a friend had. Um, she was just here visiting and she doesn't homeschool or anything, but she has these friends in her ward that do. And they did something similar, um, not like quite as big, but um, they just brought over um, caterpillars <laughs> or like, yeah, the caterpillars and the habitat thing for the butterflies. And they just dropped it off and said, we ordered these with our school funds or whatever. And we were doing them ourselves. And we just wanted to share it with you and have you do one at the same time. And this experience with this friend has been like a huge thing for her. I get like emotional talking about because it, it was just such a small thing. And she threw this, like her kids got so excited about these caterpillars turning to butterflies. And they started sharing it with their grandma and grandpa and their cousins. And they're like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing. And my friend is able to see what it would look like to learn at home with your kids. There's just this friend sharing caterpillars. And I love that. And now, and so then she, when she came home to visit, cause she's from here, she asked me so many questions about homeschooling and what does it look like and how do you do that? And um, she, she was opened up to this. Her heart was, was softened and warmed through this little experience that someone shared with her. So it could wow. be something small. I know. That is such a beautiful story. I didn't know that. That is really, really cool. What a simple thing. No words no preaching, you know, nothing, just this lovely invitation to experience this learning at home. I love that. Yeah, Cadence. I love that, that you shared that. That is such a great idea. And it reminded me, so my daughter is going to public school this year, which came out of the blue. We've always, always been homeschoolers. And, but we felt like she needed to go this year for some reason, trusting the Lord. And so she's been able to share a lot of things like that. Like whenever we do stuff at home, she'll share it with people at school. And it made me, the story of the caterpillars reminded me that she has been, she has befriended one of the girls at the bus stop. She's teaching her how to knit. And it's just the cutest thing. And so she was, she says to me the night before, I, I promised I would bring an extra set of needles and yarn. Do we have any? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. You can't tell me this the night before. <laughs> So, but we, we scrounged something up and so now she's teaching her and it's just so cute. And she was telling me that she wants to start a school when she grows up. And she said, I want it to be free, but I want it to be where the kids can just talk and ask questions. And because at school, we can, we can ask some questions, but it's just not the same. And like, she, she's all, it's got all these grand plans. And I hadn't even said anything to her about it. It was just her own idea. And I, that's all, but I just thought it was fascinating. I love it. I love that. And I loved hearing about her sitting on the playground, you know, at lunch and like teaching them all origami or whatever it was you guys had been learning that week. I just, I think that is so wonderful. And what a great opportunity for her to kind of learn a little bit about her future, you know, mission, what she's going to do. I love it. I love that this sharing um, can be so easy, sharing these experiences of learning or inviting people to experience what we're experiencing. I love that. I love the idea of simple invitations. Okay, anybody else have, uh, oh, I love, yes, I remember that. I remember Lindsay Watkins, that your daughter wanted to build a school like that too. For a whole year, she wanted to. That's pretty long for a kid's idea to hold. So, but you know, these things are things that can fuel them in their later years, just having these little passions begin to burn in their hearts. I love that. Okay, anyone else have anything else they wanna share before we go um, move to Linnell? And hopefully Linnell can share a little bit on that subject I mentioned as well. Anybody else? Okay, we're gonna go to Linnell. You want me to share about my neighbor? Would you, do you mind? Sure. I appreciate having a community nearby. I think it's wonderful to have community with my friends on Zoom and Marco Polo, but there's something a little extra added when you can have relationships and connections to your next door neighbors. And so when we moved into this house three years ago, we met our neighbors across the street. It's, it's good to know, like, if you're out of town and someone to watch your house and to 
just to trust someone. We went over and met them and tried to share some chocolates from Hawaii with them. And the man answered the door and he said, no, thank you. He didn't want them. And I've never had that experience before where I gift someone some chocolates and they say, no, thank you. I don't want it. Thank you. You can take it back. So I was kind of dumbfounded at that. I didn't know what to like, how to react and, and what to make of this relationship. That's how it started off. But it was still important to me. And it's just a husband and wife and they're in their 80s. And we live in Minnesota. So we have lots of snowfall. And for this past season, we've been um, plowing their snow for them every time it falls. And so my kids and I, we go outside, we do our driveway, which is really big. And then we just go across the street and there's as much faster and easier. So I think that's really softened them up to us. I think that may have been the trick here. So when I, Lori asked a question, how do we apply the connection we have here in our virtual friendships to home? And that sparked an idea. I realized that sometimes I don't give my kids enough time. Right now I set aside an hour and I'm listening and I'm paying attention and I'm sharing and I'm talking. I don't think I give my kids that same respect all the time. And so that was a good thought for me to realize I need to be more dedicated to giving my kids time, to listening to them, to sharing from my heart with them. And I think that's probably what we ended up doing with my neighbors, that we gave them time by serving them. We did their snow for them. And then last month, we invited them over for dinner. We shared a meal and we shared some conversation and he left that night saying, how can I repay you? What can I do for you? What do the kids like? What can I gift them? And he just felt so indebted to us. And I really think it was just because of the time and the connection. And so if we prioritize that, I think it can go a long way for us. Um, anything else you wanted me to share about that, Lori? No, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Sure, no problem. To wrap up today, I've been thinking a lot about a post that Marlene shared this past week. And I'll put it in the chat because some of you may have read it, but maybe not all of you. So I'll put it in the chat so you can follow along or read it or have it later. And I'll read it as well. I think this sums up really well what we've been talking about. This is from John Snyder. It says, wealth is largely a matter of personality and of the inner attitude toward the world in which we live. There are those who have money, but not wealth. Others have wealth, but no money. I have seen millionaires with gardens and hothouses, but with no appreciation of flowers. And I have seen poor people who did not own a foot of ground, who could walk down the street and feel such a keen enjoyment of every flower such a thrill over the beauty of a graceful tree or the song of a bird that they proved themselves wealthy indeed. For wealth is not simply what exists, but how much of it we can appreciate and use and draw upon for inspiration. Without a love for books, the richest man is poor. And this is Marlene's words. She says, I might add, how do we prepare for the economic crash so many are predicting? Make sure you have stored up true wealth inside, the kind of wealth no one can take from you. And that really struck me because that's what I found to be true in my life. Before Well-Educated Heart, opening up my heart, learning and meeting with my Mothers of Influence group, all of you, my friends, I don't think I had wealth. And I've been acquiring more wealth over time because I now appreciate those little things. Now they matter. Now I can look at some flowers and I can appreciate their beauty. I can look for beauty in the world around me, in my children, in relationships, in all sorts of experiences. And I'll just share a quick experience from this past week. My family and I went on a road trip to Chicago where my cousin performed in The King and I. He is a dancer in, on Broadway. He lives in New York. He came to Chicago, so I went to drive and see him. And it was the highlight of my week because I could truly appreciate the magnificence of that work. That theater performance was, was inspiring. It was a masterpiece to me. And I don't think I would have appreciated it as much a year ago. 
And so I could feel a change in how I watched it and how I appreciated it and how I just soaked it all up. And there was one specific scene that it literally brought me to tears. Just the emotion and the intensity of, of that scene opened my heart. And I, no, I, think, I don't think it opened my heart. It kind of just let what was in my heart spill out because I've been working for a long time to open my heart, to soften my heart. And so the little things that we're doing actually do make a difference and they add up. And as we can learn to appreciate the beauty around us, that is what will provide us wealth that cannot be taken away. I love that. I love that experience that you had too. Thank you for sharing that. That's what I think we're realizing. We're realizing how this has changed us. And, and what a blessing to be able to see the world around us more clearly and just to be open to, to the wealth that we have and to be able to have those eyes to see and um, appreciate the beauty and feel the joy. I love it. I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for all of you, the experiences that we have together on Fridays, these connections that we've made. And I appreciate all of you so much. And I love that we get to make new connections every week too. So for those of you who are new that joined us today, thank you so much. That was great too. So we look forward to next week, next Friday. Remember, we will talk about the five things. It's a take five. Um, uh, one of the take fives on the well-educated heart, the very last week, week 20, listen to that, the five things, if you can, if you can't find them, reach out to me and I'll, I'll help you find them. And we'll talk about that and lots of other things next Friday. Thanks so much for being here.